So you want to create this material in Blender 2.0 EV? Hey guys, one by Tets by Kai. I'm Kai, and we are back in Blender once again, taking a look at this awesome material that I spent way too much time creating off camera. So I kind of wanted to break down what I went through to create this material and this scene really uh, in Blender here. I have a lot of things set up here. I just pretty much duplicated this uh, this sphere all the way around just to get some cool depth of field. All right, so like I said, I'm going to turn everything off. I have volumetric on. I'm going to turn that off. Screen space reflections and bloom for the time being just so I can show you the material uh, by itself. I'll go ahead and hit period to zoom on into this, uh, this bad boy here. Now we're going to get a little bit of lag here, but that's fine. I'm going to split my window back into two so I can show you the uh, node setup, which I want you to brace yourself now, okay? Because uh, it doesn't look doesn't look too good. All right, let me just let me just uh, show you. Yeah, yeah, that's all the notes right there. It looks kind of crazy, especially if you're newer to Blender or a beginner or just a regular person at all. <laughs> Let's go ahead and actually disconnect all of uh, this displacement stuff. All of these nodes down here. All of this was displacement stuff. We'll just get rid of that for the time being. I don't. We don't need. We don't need that right now. All right. So for the basics of the uh, the actual material here, we have a lot of things. If I zoom in, you can see we have some lines. We have two different. We actually three different color lines, uh, and we have of course the lava looking fire stuff that you see there with three different colors. If you can't tell, we have the darker orange on the outside. We have the little bit uh, brighter orange, and then we have the yellow right there. So let's start off with the basic stuff. Uh, we'll talk about this over here first because this is where I started. All right, so I have a noise texture that's hooked up into a the the vector of a Voronoi. Pretty much what this is is it's just a kind of outline, kind of rocky looking thing I had going on here. So if I were to plug in just the noise, well, you would be able to see it more if I had that up. There we go. So it kind of just is a regular noise texture that we've done before. No big, no big whoop. So I kind of added in the Verona on a scale of 3.7 to kind of be able to phase it in and out like that, which I think looks really cool. So if you animated this uh, by hitting I on your keyboard and inserting keyframes, you can definitely go ahead and make like a, a cool force field kind of magic effect. Now, the, the things that I changed was, of course, I changed this to black and I changed this to this, this gray kind of very slightly blue color that we have here. And I changed it to constant from, uh, from linear or ease or whatever the default is. I changed it to constant here so that uh, the, the edges are hard instead of soft like this. That looks actually pretty good, but I, uh, I liked it better with the harder edges like that. So I uh, have that right there and then I just kind of moved it to a, a place where I thought the thickness was appropriate, which is about right there. Uh, so that's pretty much just the black. Then I have that into the principal BSDF so I can get a little bit of specular in there. And what I did uh, after that was this went into this right down here. So I kind of added this stuff down here, which was the secondary color, which was the actual rock color. Uh, I'm going to need this uh, this guy up here, so let's plug that in. All right, so this is pretty much what it looks like after we added all of that other stuff. Kind of looks like a weird moon. Um, so uh, what I did was I pretty much added a couple of different things here. I have a couple noise textures and Voronoi textures. Let's start up here. So I have a noise texture going into a color ramp. The color ramp and the noise, like I said, this is just acting as a black color. And then this is acting as the white color for the, uh, for the noise texture. So it has a little bit of graininess to it. And then I'll plug all this back in so that it goes into color and then into the mix shader. All right, so from there, I added a uh, multiply. And by the way, you can do the, the textures by hitting Shift A, search, and then just searching for noise. And the same thing with Voronoi. Just type in VOR to get Voronoi and put it down there. Uh, all right, so the scale on that was uh, 9.1, I think the same as the one above up here, and then 16 for the detail. Um, and then I plugged all of that into a multiply node, which is an add node, actually. So shift A, search, add, and then I just changed, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, not add, math, what am I saying? Uh, type in math, and then you'll get that, and then you can change, you can, oh, the lag is unrelenting. And then after you have this add shader, you go ahead and just put that uh, to multiply, and then you will have this uh, right here. So I have all of that hooked up, the deeper kind of uh, darker colors back here. So all this stuff back in, back in the background, that's what we're looking at right now. So I, I then mixed that into a multiply, and I multiplied it with this down here. Uh, we were feeding the noise into the Voronoi and saying, hey, we want to put some noise onto the Voronoi texture, and then we want the noise that we put onto the Voronoi texture, we want both of these to go into a color ramp, and I want to be able to fade them out. And then from the color ramp, 
we have both of these being multiplied together into a diffuse so then we can actually see the node because we wouldn't be able to see it if we didn't have it hooked up uh, into a material so uh, that's fed into a diffuse which is a shift a search just diffuse and then I hook that up and I mixed that together with the stuff that we had up here so I mixed both of those together now we need to completely transfer all of this this was all one big thing this is all the rocky kind of uh, gray like color of the project all of this stuff over here now this portion hit B to box select by the way and then G to move everything uh, this portion is all of the color and all the yellow and orange and stuff that I had in the scene so it started off with a noise and a Verona once again I just wanted to get a little bit of random kind of thing going on so yeah there we go I hooked the noise that I created with the noise and Verona texture into a orange color ramp with black right here and then orange to kind of make it fade and taper away into the material and then I hooked that up into an emission node so that it would emit something so that's what I did for that and then pretty much after that all the only thing I did was I just duplicated these four nodes the noise the Verona the color ramp and the emission over and over again until I got the three different layers that I wanted so for instance if I were to go ahead and change this black you can see that the the darker orange the the, the deep orange there kind of gets bigger or smaller so I, I just kind of faded it away by using that black color right there so like I said, I just I just duplicated these four by selecting them all by hitting B to box select them and then hitting Shift D to duplicate and then I just hooked it up like that. And get rid of those by hitting delete. Uh, so then we have the same exact ones over here, same values and everything, 8.2, 8.2, 0.7, 0.7. The only thing that's different is I changed this color right here to be a little bit lighter of an orange. You can see uh, if I were to go ahead and uh, change this to a different color, you can see that that is the color that's kind of inside there a little bit. Now this emission value is different, it's a little bit lower, because like I said, I wanted them to kind of uh, work together well, and you can see the brighter this gets, the darker the other colors get, so I kind of wanted to have a nice balance. Then I duplicated the same stuff again, so Noise, Veronoi, Color Ramp, Emission, this one was on 60, it's insane, and I just made this one yellow, uh, instead of like a color like that, right? And then I just uh, pushed the black up a little bit, so it was only in a smaller area, just a little tip of, uh, of, the, um, of the fiery kind of color. And then, because I needed to mix the orange color, this guy right here, the big one, the big kahuna, that guy, I mixed that guy with a mix shader with the lighter orange, and then I mixed those both together with the yellow, right? This is all the color, that's all the orange color. So I mixed all the orange color with the gray color that we created earlier, and then I plugged it into the material output. And I figured that it wasn't contrasty enough, so what I did after that was I added another math node, so I typed in the search, shift A, search for math, and then I just changed that from add to power, and I used a value of 0.9 and 0.2 for both of the values, if that would go away, 0.9 and 0.2 for both of those values to kind of give it um, a bit darker or brighter of a feel, you can see. Um, so there we go. And then I put that into the factor of the mix shader. And then after that is the displacement, which is super easy. So I have a noise texture as a default, of course, on 19.1 and 16, which is the highest level of detail you can have, and a little bit of distortion because I wanted it to not be exactly perfect. Uh, and then I plug that into a color ramp to push the white up. So I, I, I flip the white and the black because the black is usually on the, on the left-hand side. I flip those. So if I do that again over here, you can see it's kind of like eroding away, just having some craters in some specific areas. And then I multiplied that. Once again, that's a math shader, so shift A, math. And then I hooked that up into another noise texture just to give it some uh, variation in the background, make it a bit more harsh. I multiplied both of these. So I most multiplied all of this stuff over here, all this, with uh, a color ramp in Verona. Now, I did originally have this on cells. If you change the the, the, the type of uh, Verona to cells instead of the other one, then you see you get a much more um, cracky type of thing. It has like, it looks like cracks or like uh, edges or something that's messed up or broken or something. Um, and then I plug both of those into a multiply and multiply them together. Uh, and put that into the displacement. That is going to be it for today's tutorial. Hope you guys and girls enjoyed it. That is it for uh, today. I will see you in the next tutorial, but until then, bye-bye.